go out and do good for people and whether it's business or whatever it is so if you want to do good in business go give value to people go and do things that people are going to go you know what i appreciate this and then people will stick to you and say i, I want to do more with you and then opportunities will come to you but I believe if you go out and do good and, and add value, the world needs you. Lorenzo Joris, the CEO of Creative Zone, Dubai's leading business advisory firm with over 20 years of experience in sales, management, business consultancy and corporate leadership. Lorenzo's journey is nothing short of inspiring. He founded One World Communications, a multimedia powerhouse advising governments globally on branding and communication strategy. He also established Leaders Middle East and launched impactful initiatives such as Leaders Without Borders and the Power Woman of Arabia debate. Lorenzo's dedication to fostering a supportive ecosystem of startups and SMEs is truly commendable. Entrepreneurs are the fuel of the economy. Absolutely. So when you support them, you are supporting the economy. So what kind of initiatives you you do? When I came to Creative Zone five years ago, I was very passionate about Welcome back, Alpha Squad, to a new inspiring episode of the Alpha Talks show, the number one fastest growing show in the region. Today, we have an exceptional Alpha guest with us who had made significant strides in the world of business and entrepreneurship. Joining us is Lorenzo Joris, the CEO of Creative Zone, Dubai's leading business advisory firm with over 20 years of experience in sales, management, business consultancy, and corporate leadership across the Middle East, Africa, Asia, and Latin America. Lorenzo brings a wealth of knowledge and insight to the table. Before his current role, he served as a vice president of global growth and strategy at Art and Capital, driving the company international expansion. Under his leadership, Creative Zone has assisted over 75,000 businesses in setting up and thriving in the UAE. Lorenzo is passionate about giving back to the community, supporting young social entrepreneurs and empowering women through programs like She Leads. He's also the author of Recipes for a Better World and advisor to the James Michel Foundation, Lorenzo's dedication to fostering a supportive ecosystem of startups and SMEs is truly commendable. So today, he's here to share his insights and experiences and advice for aspiring entrepreneurs. So please join me in welcoming Lorenzo to the Alpha Talks show. Welcome, Lorenzo, to the Alpha Talks. Say thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Thank you. It's a so pleasure. are you ready? 100% and thank you for that incredible introduction to things is the most complete uh, bio I have ever heard about me. <laughs> <laughs> you really have a, an amazing track record uh, and everybody has to hear about that. Thank you. So Lorenzo, when I start the podcast, I usually ask a question. Sure. Once we publish the episode, people will look at the graphics, they will look at the thumbnail, they will look at the title and they will think it's an interesting episode. Mm -hmm. What can you promise them today to gain if they gave us their time? Well, I hope we can make it entertaining and uh, full of uh, some takeaways that people can take from 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 this uh, one hour chat that we we will have. Uh, uh, my journey has uh, some some learnings, if we may say, you know, things I've done right, things I've uh, mistakes that I've done like everyone else. Sure. And so hopefully I think you for younger entrepreneurs that are going through this journey, as I keep on saying, there's nothing more uh, uh, of, of wealth in the world is to learn from people that have been doing it ahead of you because there's so much that you can True. avoid and mistakes that you can True. We're not do. We're all looking forward to that. Thank you. So I start off, how are you today? How do you feel today? Great, great. Lovely weather out in Dubai, nice and sunny, sunny uh, warm. Energy. How well, I like it. So, uh, super warm. Can't let's complain. Let, let's add something <laughs> yeah. super warm. <laughs> Who's Lorenzo in a nutshell before we dig into oh. it? Uh, I'm a complex, uh, multicultural individual. I come from uh, a family with European heritage. My father is Belgian, my mother is German. Uh, they migrated to Argentina in 1948 mm -hmm. after sort of the Second World War. A lot of the European families were seeking refuge in, mm -hmm. in Latin America. That's why you have a lot of the European families that ended up going to Latin America, Argentina, Brazil. Uh, even some of the uh, Arab world, you know, that we have a lot of Lebanese and Yemenis and, and a lot of these families also migrated back uh, during the 40s and 50s. Uh, so I consider myself half Mix. Argentinian, half European. So I have the idiosyncrasy of an Argentinian guy, yeah. but with uh, European blood. And uh, yeah, I was brought up in a multicultural environment. I left Argentina when I was about 18 How years was old. The early days in Argentina looks like? What's cool, Argentina is it's it's a very cool place. Uh, our problem is is one of uh, insecurity and, and and economic stability. We 
we went through a lot of, of, of difficult moments uh, through we had military uh, governments we we've had it all and uh, it's it's a tough place to 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 be brought up if I ask you your multicultural family and you and mm. the upbring, uh, upbringing how did it shape you we had it tough we had it tough we we were a family that uh, we had uh, stages in our life where we had no money we had money we had no money we had money mm. I remember having you know tough conversations with my the family seeing how my father at times couldn't afford to, to pay our education and and these are the things that I took from from him and from the values of my family that I learned from is even though he couldn't afford this great private school that he was sending me to he will always find a way of keeping keeping up with things in order to give me a good education in order to to give me a good uh, you know a good education overall a quick note before we jump into this episode I find this incredibly intriguing. On the back end of our YouTube channel, it says around 75% of you who watch this channel frequently over the lifetime of this channel haven't yet hit the subscribe button. I just wanted to ask you for a favor. It helps this channel so much if you choose to just subscribe. It helps us invite guests that give you great value. It helps us scale the production and as well makes this show bigger and bigger for you. So if I will ask you just one favor, and if you enjoyed the previous episodes and you're currently enjoying this episode, could you please hit the subscribe button? I love your support. It's incredible to see all your comments and engagement. And we are just starting. I can't wait to go on this journey with you. Thank you so much. And I will repay this gesture by making sure that everything we do on this show makes it bigger, bigger and better. I'm committed to do this promise. Do we have a deal? Thank you so much for subscribing. It means the world to me. Before we start shooting, you told me like you were the only rebel in your family mm. that at the age of 17, yeah. you decided, okay, I'm done here. Yeah. I need to find opportunities. Yeah. From where this happened, how did it come to you and what yeah. actions you took? Yeah, uh, it's a really uh, crazy story for an Argentinian. I, uh, when I was uh, about five, six years old, I, I, I went to a boarding English school in Argentina and I was playing cricket. Mm. Cricket in Argentina is tiny, it's mm, a very small yeah. sport, but I, I really liked it. And uh, uh, cricket in Argentina was being uh, backed and funded by some very uh, wealthy individuals that wanted to see the sport grow. Yeah. And long story short, when I was 16 years old, I got scouted to go and play cricket in England. Uh, and uh, they offered me to go and play for, for the, uh, a minor county cricket club and a league. I ended up playing for Surrey County mm -hmm. Cricket Club for the B team. And, uh, and this is when I left I Argentina. Di I didn't know that. So yeah. also a sports sport. Yeah, big yeah. time. So you moved to England, yeah. UK, for sports. Yeah, correct. And then what happened? I did two seasons in England, coming back and forth, back uh, into Argentina. And then after uh, two, three years, I realized I didn't want to pursue this as a, as a long, long term career. career. And I went back to school, to, to, to university. I, I pursued my uh, studies in, in business and international business and marketing. And I managed to finish that in between traveling to uh, the US and Argentina. So I did a little bit of of both and I finished to manage to get my degree and in December uh, 2000 and, uh, 2001 I left Argentina for good and I moved to Spain and this is when I I again a roller coaster of travel and but where started. then this one word communications it was in Spain yeah. or yeah so in 2001 I moved to Spain and I got a job uh, uh, producing the special economic reports that would come out in, in newspapers from around the world, like the New York Times and USA Today. And uh, it I was a company based in, out of Madrid. Mm. And after three years of being with them, I decided to open my own company, doing the same thing. But at that time, I remember I knew that I wanted to do it differently. And I said, I want to do the same, but on TV. Because uh. we were traveling around the world and pitching these governments and these countries from around the world to feature themselves in these big newspapers. And I said, if we were to do the same, but on TV, I thought it would be, you know, 10 times more course, effective yeah. and more. So I did that and I, I had never had any TV experience in my life. No totally. media, nothing. 
And I remember uh, a partnering with uh, someone who ended up being very influential in my life, uh, a lady called Leila Sistani, uh, who was my business partner for about seven, eight years. And I remember her telling me when we were about to make this decision, she said, go to the mall and buy the biggest TV camera that you can find <laughs> and then go and buy a plane ticket. And we go off to our first project, who was it was in Tanzania. And, uh, and this is what we did. So I remember reading the manual of this big How TV. To operate this thing. It was a big Sony H uh, HD cam, you know, with cassettes yeah. and none of this. Then even Blu-ray technology came yeah. and, and we did that. And then everything went digital. And uh, we had a meeting with the prime minister of, uh, of Tanzania the second day that we were arriving. And there I was reading the manual of this TV camera. I never, I never uh, had anything to do with, with media. And, and that's how we got started. How long, how long you stayed in media? So I did that uh, for about 12, 13 years, nonstop. So I was constantly traveling around the world and interviewing people. What and did you like about it? it? It was the possibility of, of, of meeting so many different people from different cultures, learning everything about each of these destinations. So everywhere I won, whether everywhere I went, whether it was, you know, a, a destination that was reaching oil and gas or minerals or tourism, you would have to understand and learn everything that that country had to offer because I had to have one on one conversations mm -hmm. uh, with high dignitaries and and I needed to sort of showcase that I knew what I was talking about. So whether it was us interviewing people for the mining industry in Angola or the tourism sector in Antigua and Barbuda, you had to sort of engage with people and, and understand the preparation, their proper preparation. Correct. Correct. If I ask you what would be the key lessons that you got from this period of life? Uh, that's a really interesting question. I, I think the first thing that I got to start seeing as I was going through this journey, uh, the, the thing that struck me the most was I realized that a lot of these people that I was interviewing, I didn't find them, anyth I didn't find them special. Mm -hmm. I started seeing all these prime ministers and presidents and ministers, and don't get me wrong, not, not, it's not special in a, but mm -hmm. I, I, I realized, you know, they're all humans, normal yeah. humans, you know? And I started saying, what is it that they do so well that they become so successful and they're running countries and ministries and, and these big companies? So I started to try to, to you know, uh, trickle down in understanding what were those things. And I, I took a few things. Uh, to, to me, was number one is they realized themselves that they are not the smartest people in the room mm -hmm. and that they are really good at, you know, getting uh, the, right team. the right team, the right people around them. Uh, they were, they're really good at decision making. They're really, they're very fast at knowing where to go. They go what's you know, between right and wrong. And Do you they think it's by gut more, the decision making that they have? A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot is about gut, a lot is about determination. True. And maybe sometimes they fail, but they're very quick at, you know, picking themselves up and, and going for the next, next one. And uh, so, you know, determination, I think, is one of the first things that I learned, like how, how determined these people are to, to succeed. True. And, Leaders, yeah. leaders, Middle East. Yeah, if I move. it's you were the time when you came to Dubai, or it was before. Yeah, so uh, there was a bit of a transition there when I was doing these TV shows. I always kept on thinking, but I want to come back to Dubai. I was always based here, but I was ninety-five percent of the time outside Travel. traveling, and I knew that at some point I wanted to properly settle down here and have a bit of more of a normal life. Comfort. So, <laughs> so I said. I launched this magazine uh, called Leaders Middle East uh, against all odds because it was a time that already social media and digital was already picking up highly. And I remember going to see the big, you know, advertising agencies who would have the accounts of the big spenders and everyone was telling me, uh, what are you, doing? Are you yeah. sure? <laughs> you know, you're it's going a print into mag, huh? Correct. Yeah. It was a print with, with digital yeah. exposure. But and I was saying, yeah, this, uh, you know, but, but I knew the, deep inside that the magazine was a conduit for me to to do what I wanted to do next, which was to come to the country and to start, you know, rubbing shoulders with the the, the, the A players, the big people, doing interviews, mm -hmm. learning from them. Love the strategy. And mm -hmm. and and actually, look, it worked out yeah. because uh, through this magazine, uh, I did one interview with a man that I respect uh, immensely. So he's a guy called Arman Narton, who mm -hmm. is the 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 founder of Arton Capital who ended up employing me yeah. you know and and uh, I remember through meeting him and and having these chats I uh, I remember telling him I said if I would ever consider going back to working for someone it's and be you. and uh, working in the corporate world it it could be someone like you and 
he he texted me like a week later and said, "Listen, let's go and have a coffee." And and that's what did you see in him? Because I know Ar- uh, Armin. Armin very well. Yeah. What I loved about him, I was giving corporate training yeah. to Art and Capital, and he was sitting inside. Okay. Do you understand what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the humbleness and um, I would say the openness to learn, it's something that highlights right away. Yeah. So why did you say to him such statement? If I'm going to go back to work for someone, it's going to be you. What did you see in that time? I, I love what he created out of his uh, brand, out of his company. Uh, I've, I've never met someone with such eye for detail uh, as him when it comes to his branding, his vision, or what he wanted to achieve. The incredible work that he, cre- by creating, the, he has this, uh, the Passport Index. Yeah. Um, the work that he has done by, by advising governments from around the world in creating the citizenship by investment programs. Uh, you know, uh, I just I just loved everything that he has created, his brand, his identity, and and I loved uh, working with him. And and then How the opportunity. Was the work? How was the work over there? You know, you've been working in a very interesting part, yeah. which is the global expansion. Yeah. Every company in the world would want to reach a level that okay, yeah. we are going globally. Yeah. It's pain in the butt. Yeah. So. Tell us about this period. It, it came very natural to me because, you know, the world was my, my space. Exactly. So for me to go to him or to any company and say, listen, let's go and do a, a business breakfast in Lagos or in, in, in Lusaka, in mm-hmm. Zambia, I, it, it would be such a natural thing for me. I would know my ways around. I know how to talk to these people. I know how to logistically go about doing things over there and for a lot of people that haven't had the opportunity of experiencing this they they wouldn't even know how to start or, or they would they wouldn't find themselves as comfortable so that's that's what i did mm-hmm. with armand uh, i i helped them you know grow internationally we we went about doing all these events in in vietnam and and uh, and uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, nigeria and some other countries so it, it was very natural for me if somebody watching us and he have a business like let's say like let's put the business type aside uh-huh. if people are wanting to go global what uh-huh. are the key things that they need to know before just okay mm. we're gonna go global mm. that's a really interesting question i think uh, most of the people that uh, go into trying to expand internationally and they don't do it successfully is because they have the wrong approach to things in today's world if you want someone else to get into business with you and you want to convince them of partnering with you and getting into sort of representing who you are, your vision, the services that you deliver, you need to put forward something that becomes very attractive to them mm-hmm. and that gives them enough skin in the game in order for, for them to say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to go and you know, put aside everything else that I'm doing or even perhaps dedicate an X amount of your day, whether it's 10 percent, 20, 50 or, or is it full time? But I think uh, a lot of people uh, misjudge what it takes for you to go and convince these people. Mm. So you need to be very creative on your approach. You need to have a very flexible approach on the partnership, what is expected. And most than anything is what is that you're willing to put forward on the table for the other individual for him to say, you know what? I like this. I'm going to go ahead. What is the most common bottleneck people can see when they're going for a global expansion? Uh, I think it's this. I think it's it's finding the right people that want to come on board with you, and that uh, that's a very hard one. Actually, ah, uh, mm-hmm. it's it's everything. True, because uh, f- for you to grow, you you need you need people around you, and you need people to to you know take, take them th- take the, the brand steps. and go go forward. And and the moment that you as a business owner realize that you will only grow if you get other people to go and do the legwork on your behalf. Uh, but as we said, no one is going to go and do anything if, if the offer is not attractive enough. And, and there is one thing that is not lacking nowadays, which is ideas and possibilities and mm. offers. And uh, so. And it works in any business, actually. Yeah. Offers is, uh, is a killer. How long you stayed in Art and Capital? Uh, about a year and a half, uh, coming to yeah. about maybe two years. two years. And then the opportunity came to me to to come to Creative Zone and be a CEO there. And, uh, and I just uh, loved uh, that possibility. What and attracted I you there? Uh, I remember through the interviews, I said, uh, they were asking me, why would you want to do this? And I just had one thing in mind. I said, I just want to be a CEO. 
mm-hmm. at that time I was just a, you know vice uh, president yeah. of global growth and strategy mm-hmm. and I said I want to be a CEO and I have to admit they took a gamble on me because I wasn't an mm-hmm. experienced CEO I was a good BD guy yeah. and global expansion and all that uh, looks very fancy mm-hmm. and but they took a gamble on me and it, it worked Work. because we we have tripled uh, revenues in what the is the creative zone then for people a creative zone is one of the largest corporate service providers in the middle east uh, we essentially help individuals set up a new business when they come to the country mm-hmm. or for the existing community of of people that are looking to launch a new business we help them with everything related to getting themselves registered uh, and acquiring a, a business trade license through one of the free zones or in the mainland and we also assist with everything else that comes with I'll, it i'll stop you here sure opening companies in dubai it's very easy okay but it's very confusing for a person just coming in the country yeah so let's roll and play something that i want to open a company mm-hmm. the first thing that gets what do you what do you want to do with the company is it an llc or like free zone or mainland or in free zone which type of free zone which one the landscape it's unbelievably i don't want to say confusing but the opportunities or options are too big correct how do you narrow it to clients yeah look that that's the beginning of why our business is is kind of needed the, as you were rightly saying there's there's about 54 free zones in the country we're sitting in one yeah <laughs> correct uh, so there's 54 free zones to choose from mm. You as a, you know, an entrepreneur, as an investor, as a, a newcomer to the city, you don't know where to go. You don't know which one True. is the most convenient for you, which one aligns the best in regards to what you're trying to do, to the business activity that you want to do, to your possible expansion uh, plans. You know, uh, everybody has a, a different approach, a diff- different pricing strategy. Some of them are more friendly towards people that want to build a team, that want to have many visas. Yeah. Some of them are easier to handle if you're just a single entrepreneur with a, a couple of visas. So it's all to do with the r- activity that you want to do, um, also the, the number of visas that you want to have, and, and what is the ecosystem around you. So mm-hmm. for example, as you're rightly saying, the MCC is it's one of the most, it's the world's, one of the world's biggest free zones, and they managed to create a proper ecosystem mm-hmm. of, of support that you know, I know that, that they organize a lot of events and networking sessions, and they have a lot to give to um, to entrepreneurs. But on the other side, maybe they are a little bit more restrictive when it comes to uh, the possibilities for uh, smaller entrepreneurs because they have a requirement of having to have an office space. Offices are available, and but they're not for every budget. So there are a lot of different options out there, and, and our work is to facilitate that and that journey but here's the catch and the most beautiful thing of all our pricing is the same as going directly to a free zone mm. oh, well. there you go but then you don't have to go to the free zone and take a token exactly. we uh, we give you a dedicated account manager when you set up a company 20 people in our company you know, that's get involved. the question i wanted to ask because for example as a regular person i want to open a company i yeah. just either raise a phone call you Mm -hmm. or write an email to the company and i think everything will happen like this yeah how many people are behind the scene yeah as i said well we are about 200 employees and for one single setup about 20 people get involved push and uh so again even for the smaller players and stuff in in this space it becomes very difficult for them to be able to deliver uh you know a, a proper service because it really requires a lot of you know, sophisticated professional individuals that take care of one specific area, you know, whether you're having to deal with your visa, you have to go and do your medical, you have to, Mm -hmm. you have to have a team dedicated to tax and accounting nowadays, you need a a whole team dedicated to compliance. You know, you're a business owner, Uh, two, three years ago, anything related to having to sign UBO form declarations, Mm -hmm. ESR, AML, uh, this is all new to the country. So, if if you have someone guiding you through all of this, it's it, but the it kitchen is big. When you tell me two hundred employees, yeah, the ba- the exactly, is big. exactly. No, but I'm saying for an individual person that wants to go and True. do it on their own and it's deal, heavy. it's it's hard. It's mm. hard, and and you don't know if you're doing it right. So at least 
you know you have the security of someone that is thinking of all of that on your behalf and i love that you said that the pricing is the same yeah. so people are not losing yeah, anything exactly. they're just getting the better service yeah so we we do make money out of other services that we provide for people that are things that eventually they will end up needing Using. you know we'll exactly. talk about it yeah but just for the people listening to us what sets creative zone aside in this extremely mm. competitive besides the track record of course mm, because mm, it's mm. the track the record speaks for, for itself but yeah what sets it aside i think at uh, the bottom of things uh, there is something that it's to do with the fact that we r- truly care about delivering uh, an exceptional uh, customer experience we, we really go far and beyond um, f- for really helping people out and you know i, I can't give I can give so many examples. We have uh, uh, a weekly meeting called Client Relations Issues, and even my chairman attends this meeting mm-hmm. on a weekly basis, right? Uh, uh, including me and the head of client relations and a team of another 12 client relationship managers. And we bring up on a weekly basis, uh, you know, uh, issues that we've had, mistakes that we've done, Uh, you know delays that we wow. be, might be encountering and we really go far and beyond to try to find solutions to any hiccups uh, that people might be having and you know uh, we're not perfect like everyone else we 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 do mis- we make mistakes sometimes the clients themselves get delayed with certain things in presenting certain papers uh, the government themselves have certain policies that sometimes uh, don't make it easy for people so you know it's very common for us to receive calls at 2 3 in the morning and having a client stuck at the airport because they forgot Oof. to uh, you know ab- uh, you know renew their child's visa and they were on the way out or something so uh, w- we have policies in place to to cater for that and to constantly be on the spot ready to help and, and to to support our clients Lorenz, we love to talk about success stories mm. so what kind of success stories businesses that creative zone set it up mm. and turned into <coughs> let's say uh, not necessarily to be a unicorn but yeah. a well reputed company that existed because of your support yeah yeah that's that's a really question good question we we have all sorts of names and brands that came through through creative zone that started with us uh, very very small and that grew into big 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 names uh, we have of the case of uh, mom's world mm-hmm. uh, uh, miss ataya w- was our client uh, for many many years i think uh, a couple of years ago she exited the business very successfully as well selling uh, we have the case of uh, donna benton from mm-hmm. the entertainer uh, she also exited her business and and uh, later on i think re-engaged with uh, with her investors and uh, it's a new face in, in developing things and we have big names like the cases of lg and and, and big companies when they come and enter the the uae market What's they use you? they they use us mm-hmm. for for everything um uh, we have a lot of famous restaurants uh in in the uae they they set up through us Uh, but through you, reputation they come to you guys through reputation yeah i think they can see that um, through word of mouth and through social media that we are one of the the most recognized individuals so anybody nowadays that is looking to this they they kind of uh, listen but you know what what makes me the proudest mm-hmm. is a lot of even uh, the 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 non famous people True. you know like i remember when i first came um to 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 creative zone and i started engaging with things so we have a board on on what we call our monthly sales yeah. right dashboard that our dashboard right and do you know on the dashboard we would list all the names all the company names of all the companies that we set up now this is going to strike you the same mm-hmm. way that i struck me we set up about something like 300 companies a month right wow. and you look at this dashboard on a monthly basis and you see 300 new names and you see all these cool names of people that are setting yeah. up and their you see dreams their passion absolutely. their inspirations oh my uh, god and you see these names and you see these people's dreams and you see what they're and so cool names yeah. and you're like and and part of me wants to say i would love to talk to yeah. this guy and see w- what is he wanting to do what is his dream what True. what are, but this is what really it's excites me of my day today is like we are You know, in one's life, there's two or three very important 
moments in mm -hmm. our lives. One of them could be, you know, the day that we get married. True. Another one could be when we have our first child. Mm -hmm. And the other one could be when we start our first business. True, true. And for us to be in that moment when we're helping someone in such an important stage of their life when they're getting launched, you can see it in people's eyes and they come to us and they're there and they're asking us questions. How I go, we'll go about this? How do I do that? You are helping them in a moment in their life that is, is so is, critical to is them. So, so true, important. True. And so whenever I see these 300 names on the board and I look at this, this is what makes us... I goosebumps. Uh, Literally, <laughs> I, because seriously, it's yeah, aspirations, I, I would vision, love you goals. to come to our office. I'll show you this. Literally, uh, I will, because it's, it's names. really, I swear, I goosebumps. But uh, even this, imagine what all these people need. Yeah. Imagine the Support. how much that, that it can be done True. with these 300 new names. These people need everything True. from their newcomers. They're in the city. They need everything. They need housing. They need uh, our support. True. They need bank account. They need they need restaurants. They they need everything. True. True. Lorenzo, if I will move backwards a little ba uh, bit to circle back on the thing that you said, when your pricing is the same, mm -hmm. but you earn more on something else. True. What kind of supplementary services that you offer? Yeah. That's a really good question. And um, uh, I mean, in internally speaking, yeah. our business model has been shifting that because we've seen the advent of the free zones coming out with such power, we realized that as a cost, uh, uh, corporate service provider, we couldn't, our value proposition couldn't be one that we're charging uh, much more on top because simply people will go directly True. there. So the model had, had to change. So. Uh, as you're rightly saying, uh, our business is not based on what we make out of uh, uh, setting, setting up, up a company or, or what we make out of a, of, a, of a license. I mean, even to explain, we do get a, um, a, a, a commission paid from, from True, some of the fees. The Correct. So our business is nowadays uh, based on Nespresso. all the other services that we, that we, that we uh, are uh, including on everything else, as I'm saying, everything else that these 300 entrepreneurs will need uh, as, aside of this. So we we developed something about, uh, of about 12, 14 different so units. Business yes, units kind yes. Of. So yeah. one of them is called Create Zone Tax and Accounting. We have a full-fledged 60 employee tax and accounting firm so that is dedicated for the uh, for the companies yeah yeah but it's fully yeah, all our employees and, and, and uh, we we are supporting everyone with tax and accounting we have uh, another division called create some banking so we have 10 people dedicated to opening bank accounts whether it's personal uh, and, and corporate we have um, uh, another division called insurance so we help people with setting up their insurance needs we have another one called payment gateway we help mm. people you know uh, set up their payment gateway through a lot of our partners like pay tabs and teller and, and much more we have the vision called recruitment services hr and recruitment services everybody that comes in needs to, to hire, hire people. people they need to understand the hr landscape how do they align themselves labor law, labor law. law. how do you go about doing employment contracts we have a division called H create its own legal we have a division called create its own mar media and marketing we help people design their websites do their business cards wow. do their logo their branding so all of this combined now has kind of overtaken the revenue that we used to make in uh, in the licensing part so when i joined five years ago licensing used to be about 80 percent 20 percent was we called it extended services yeah. now it's the other it's way flipped. around now 80 percent of our business is extended services 20 percent is licensing wow lorenzo you're a big supporter of young entrepreneurs mm -hmm. what kind of initiatives uh, you do to support all these Entrepreneurs are the fuel of the economy. Absolutely. So when you support them, you are supporting the economy. Yeah. So what kind of initiatives you you do? Thank you for that question, Saif. And uh, definitely, um, when I came to Creative Zone five years ago, I was very passionate about trying to develop uh, these kind of initiatives that really went far and beyond in, in trying to support the youth and uh, the startups and entrepreneurs. So. We launched a series of initiatives. I think the first one that we did was the launch of an accelerator program called Startup X. Mm -hmm. And we uh, partnered with about 15 other institutions and we put together a, a value proposition of, 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 of value support that was 
cash price, and then a lot of value that a lot of these other 15 partners were giving, mm -hmm. including from our side, we were giving a, a free free trade license to, to four of the finalists. Mm -hmm. There was a cash price, as I said. Uh, there was a bank opening uh, bank accounts. Uh, there is mentoring in it, in a way? Or? There was mentoring mm -hmm. included. There was a round of, uh, of uh, demo days, mm -hmm. and we had a panel of judges. Wow. And we were all the sort of giving advice and, and tips on, on, on how to go about this. And, and then in the end of the journey, we were also introducing this uh, final 10 that we selected out of 3,000 applicants. And we put them in, f in front of uh, VC funds and uh, wow. family offices and investors. Mm -hmm. And quite a few good deals came through from these people that got funded, apart from the support that we have given in terms of providing free trade licenses and uh, mentorship. And uh, we were giving free office space, uh, free tax and accounting, all of this. So, so we nurtured uh, about 10 uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, and we saw some, some of them being funded uh, successfully. When we saw the success of this, we launched the same, but uh, women focus. Mm -hmm. So we launched uh, She Leads, uh, and it was the same thing. We received something like 1,500 applications. Why women dedicated? Because we realized that uh, there was quite a, a, a movement uh, related to a lot of you know, institutions, government, semi-government, privately held, uh, we partner with mm -hmm. the Dubai Business Women Council, and uh, uh, there's other groups like Female Fusion, a lot of interesting uh, p people that are really also driving the support. So we all come together, and uh, especially with the Dubai Business Women Council at that time, and, and we, we created this program, again, very successful. And this comes from my passion even before joining mm -hmm. Creative Zone. Uh, at that time, I organized the first, it was called the Power Women of Arabia Summit. Mm -hmm. And it was done in partnership with uh, Dr. Raja al mm -hmm. who is the president of the Dubai Business Women Council, a very prominent businesswoman in, in the UAE, the chairwoman of the, of the al Ghul group. Yeah. And, um, and uh, we had Becky Anderson at that time from CNN mm -hmm. moderating. We brought uh, very influential women from across the Middle East. Uh, so, so I always had a sort of an interest of finding mm -hmm these kind of topics and, and then we also did another one called the Young Global Leaders Summit. Mm -hmm. uh, we held this twice in Ras Al Khaimah. We brought speakers from all over the world and again with the concept of developing young entrepreneurs. So, so do similarly... You partner, do you partner with the American University? Uh, yes, the, we had a partnership with the American University of Dubai for mm -hmm. the uh, Young Global Leaders Summit. Yeah, Because yeah. I mentor in the Entrepreneurship Center over there. Okay. If you're doing something next time, it will be good to... It will be a pleasure, yeah, yes. It will be great. Yeah. Another thing, a lot of entrepreneurs now, they just go into entrepreneurship journey with a motivation. Mm -hmm. Without a big plan, just we're motivated, we have a dream, mm. you understand all these things. Yeah. What are the common mistakes that you see mm. in all these, running, mm. looking at these accelerators? Mm -hmm. uh, what do you see? First, I would like to say that I love how you started that, and I think that's the key. I think we should never kill that dream of people wanting to get into doing things. And I think that's that's 80% of the job, True. you know, because I think if anything would be the, the biggest killer of anyone's dreams and aspirations and getting to do new things is that lack of motivation to make that move. So anyone that even I, I wouldn't go about you know, depicting people negatively as saying, oh, you got yourself a little bit too quick into it, but you didn't organize yourself. Actually, you know what? Don't even listen to mm -hmm. that. Just throw yourself into it. Do you, if you're good, then you're going to find a way exactly. of swimming out of, of there successfully. But I would say, first thing, just go in, go you know, throw, throw yourself in it. Then it, it, it will depend how good you are, how, how you come out. Resilient in a yeah. way. Yeah. For a person that comes or handles, I would say, like through his journey, being in corporate, being an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. do you think that anyone can be an entrepreneur? Uh, anyone that really wants it. I think the key thing there is, is this, this determination, because uh, if you think that you want to be an entrepreneur, but you're not really sure, um, it's going to be very hard because True. entrepreneurship is, is hard, man. It's tough. It's very tough. Mm. It's, it's you Brutal. against... Is you against the world uh, every morning, 
and every morning you wake up and you have to have a shield uh, you know the, the size of this office for mm -hmm. you to go fight firefighters the problems that you're going to be thrown at uh, you know and and, uh, and I talk about this thing sometimes I do go to universities and talk about you know th this is what they taught you entrepreneurship is at university and this is what it's really all about so in school they teach you entrepreneurship is about managing a PNL yeah. and knowing how to do marketing campaigns and knowing how to hire and this is actually what it is to be an entrepreneur which is dealing with people that are not paying you uh, changes in the government changing your supply chain uh, chain uh, of things you know uh, it's it's hard man True. but you know i usually love to say that a type of entrepreneur that you wake up every day in the morning and you have to put in the work but yeah. you don't know when it's going to give you back oh absolutely it's an absolute uncertainty so it needs a lot of i would say character from people yeah to pass through this yeah lorenzo if i ask you through all this period different companies, different businesses, industries. What's your favorite failure? The one that you're grateful for? Oh, wow, that's a good <laughs> question. Uh, my biggest failure, uh, that's really difficult to answer. I look, I've been very fortunate. I'm not gonna say I didn't have a lot of failures. I mean, I got a little bit burnt, I would say, with the whole crypto side of life. 99% <laughs> <I think> <laughs> of people. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Uh, I, I think I got a little bit in it without really fully understanding. I think nobody really understand so understood what was going on. I think I went in. I think I tend to go into these things a little bit too late. Yeah. And, uh, when and the I wave think, pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I tend to think when I get into it, it's, it's, it's because done. it's already too late. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, I, I, I describe myself as uh, I'm a very um, sort of... Um, uh, uh, down to earth uh, I, I don't tend to jump too quickly into things I, I let nature and time do its so thing so you sleep over things you're not the risk no. what's your level of risk what do you uh, I have a, a, a moderate amount of risk taking uh, you know uh, mix in me but but I like to do things uh, uh, the proper way I, I like to get into things that appear a little bit risky but I want to learn as I go along and, and I I mature it a lot I go through it I maybe I do a, a thousand phone calls before mm -hmm. I'm, I'm able yeah, day, yeah. Mm -hmm. and uh, and I see that there's two types of people in the world True. the ones that are willing to go through these kind of things and and, and sometimes this uh, is, is a bit of a thing that I see w between <laughs> even with my wife I, I, I look at her and the way that she makes certain decisions and stuff and the way I make some decisions is that I need to go through things a hundred times. Yeah. I need to evaluate them. I need to involve other people. And then I feel totally ready. Did it well, make you lose opportunities or not? That type? Uh, no. No. No, no, no. Uh, I, I, I really take my time, you know, like, funnily, for example, now we're going through uh, refurbishing. We want to change our bathrooms mm -hmm. in, uh, in our house. And I, I see her way of decision making and what she wants to decide on how she wants but before I decide on the tiles, I, I want to see the full picture. I want to I want to see a hundred different options. Yeah. I want to understand, and then I'm I feel a um, hundred percent uh, you know ready to make the decision. But somebody uh, through an interview like this taught me where this comes from, and he told me you know people like you and me we have something, and he said that we have. He said well you know what it is. I said no. He said we have something called uh, third world paranoia. <laughs> <laughs> so people and you and me, we come from environments that we're constantly being challenged. True. You know, everyone wants to screw true. us up. Yeah, yeah, exactly, you know? exactly. My neighbor, true, true, my true, friend, true, true, my true. the government, yeah. the you know. So you uh, become like okay. You so at any any opportunity that comes to you, you will. Uh, Where is the kick? Yeah, yeah. yeah you will you will try kick? to analyze 150 true. different avenues. But other you know Western societies don't have this. Yeah. They don't think this way. True. Something comes to them, they look at two Looks things good. and say, yeah, let's go for it. And you know, so True. people like you and me, we 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 have another way of uh, <laughs> analyzing Where things. Where the hit is coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I switch it, what is your proudest moment? The biggest accomplishment. Mm. Uh, again, so for the wife is the marriage, and then after that. Yeah. Mm. I think it's it's an accumulation of small little decisions that I've been taking over the years. I cannot attribute it to one key thing. You know, it. I think life is 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 the add-on of a, a lot of little things True. that keep on taking you. But something that you achieved and said, like, oh damn, that's. 
it's, it's again, it's it. this, you know, I, I'm very proud of the little decisions, you know, the, the transformation between going from owning my business. I got lucky. I, I got into entrepreneurship in the earlier very interesting, true. Life, mm -hmm. uh, stage of my life. And then I went the other way around. I went back into true. the corporate world. But now I'm so happy, you know, the, 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 these guys, they've gave me an opportunity to become an intrapreneur. So, you know, I'm, I'm part of the business. Whenever we create new business opportunities elsewhere, they, they add you on to the scheme of things. So it's not that I'm just an employee, you know. And you know, Lorenzo, your path is very interesting because a lot of people say like, okay, you're in corporate, mm. then you become an entrepreneur and there is no way back. Mm. No, there is always a way back. Absolutely. There is an opportunity to go back to corporate yeah. and switch to become an entrepreneur. Absolutely. That you can really add value. Yeah. How your day looks like? Uh, I wake up about 6 a.m. in the morning with the kids. Mm. I have an amazing wife that she's really hands on when it comes to everything related to the family, the house, the kids. So she's really good at, you know, organizing the kids to get them ready to school. We wake up, we have breakfast together. Then she's off to take the kids to school. I uh, just finished breakfast with them. I started getting organized for my day, look at my calendar, get changed head to the office about 8.30, 9 a.m. And I already have a usual day full of, of meetings, calls, a lot of calls related to my day-to-day, -day about the day-to-day -day of running the business. You know, my philosophy when it comes to this is, is I would say 80% is about showing up. True. You know, you wake up every day mm -hmm. just, you know, willing to put your face to things and don't shy away from anything, whether it's a a, a customer complain or someone that wants to meet you or an amazing guy that wants to invite you to a video podcast mm. and I think it's all about just showing up you know and then things happen to you so uh, quite a lot of that you know try to live as, as passionately as I can I play paddle three four times a week Oof. nowadays famous, yeah. <laughs> so uh, right after this yeah, I have a, a paddle, paddle game <laughs> waiting for me at 6 p.m. in Alcus <laughs> It's been the best thing that ever happened to me in the last uh, few years because it keeps you in shape, fit, uh, fit. you socialize, mm. you sweat a little bit. And uh, so things are good. Look, I think we're very happy to be part of an incredible of country course. like the UAE and this bustling city, Dubai, that keeps us all inspired and gave us... The best thing that you saw how it evolved fast. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just incredible to see the ambition and... You know, I met a very prominent uh, Mirati in government lately, and he told me, you have no idea of what is to come. So just... Wh wh when was that? <laughs> this was the last week. Oof. So that gives you kind true. of goosebumps. Yeah, you think, true. are you serious? Are you, are you guys really pushing the envelope in such true. a way that you are, e you are even so... I mean, these people, their ambition and their, their determination of where they want to go is just, I think the, the city is, is outgrowing all of us. I think this place 100%. keeps you, know, you on the toes. Oh, my God. But, True. you know, I, I, I came here 18 years ago. I, I live in the Palm and I was walking down the, the West Beach mm -hmm. area and I was looking back and I see this massive cruise ship there yeah, on that yeah. thing. And then I look back and then you see that whole waterfront new area and behind me all these none of this existed yeah. six seven years ago and then even as a business person or entrepreneur you look back and say what have i been doing with my life you True. know when all this is happening yeah. in front of your eyes True. and it gives you it, it challenges you right because you say this place is going and you as a you know we're all we all want to you know we all want to grow and do business and do well True. and make money but then when you see running a city other people just flying yeah, by true. you and building people building yeah. towers and stuff and then you're like all right well, <laughs> here know. i am you know but that's the thing that motivates us and keeps us pushing you yeah 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 if i ask you what is success to you what does it mean success to me is striking the right balance between everything that you want in your life whatever that is so if you you know want to have a peaceful life that it's fulfilled with uh, days at the beach and uh, family time or doing a sport or or making lots of money or doing day in and day out meetings that's success whatever it is that you feel is what makes you happy uh, then is what you need to pursue in in my opinion in my case i'm blessed to have found sort of that very balanced you know uh, 
stage in it's my life. Uh, days, uh, I think it's 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 hard. I think a lot of people uh, and it depends suffer. On what phase suffer and i think uh, it's a blessing for those that manage to find that space where you're content with who you are you're happy with what you have uh and you know what the beauty of this is is that the moment that you reach that then even more comes to you that you're not even in search for i remember meeting a consultant uh, many years ago and i sat with him and he was asking me what are your goals what are your ambition and i asked and i was thinking well, I, I need to look smart in front of this guy you know <laughs> And I, and I came clean and I said, you know what, uh, I don't have any. I just, I just wake up and I find ways of being good to people, being nice to people, doing things that I'm, I like. And, and, you know, I look back at my life and I have things that I never even dreamed of. Mm -hmm. I have a flat that I never even thought I would live in. I have cars that I never thought I would even dream of driving. I have a wife and two kids that I never even dreamed of. So what am I going to be? Who am I to to try and dictaminate that no clue because everything that I achieved it's, it was even beyond my own imagination so for us to sit down and try to emulate thinking of what's going to be I think we have no clue True. and I think if you are let yourself open to receiving and, and but that one thing but there is a north star you need to look at but, uh, th th but that's my north star go out and do good mm -hmm. do, go out and do good for people and whether it's business or whatever it is. So if you want to do good in business, go give value to people. Go go and do things that people are going to go, you know what, I appreciate this. I like, and then people will stick to you and say, I, I want to do more with you. And then opportunities will come to you. But I believe if you go out, you know, and, and do good and, and add value, you know, uh, the world needs you. 100%. The world needs good people, good, people. good entrepreneurs that are willing to mm -hmm. go out and do good. And the world will suck you in and, and present you with uh, hell, opportunities. True. Hell and opportunities. And yeah. you turn the hell into opportunities. Yeah. We are on the Alpha Talks show. Right. And we have the nugget question. Because t now when we're talking, I came up with another nugget question. So we will add two nugget questions sure. now. So the first one is, how do you define an alpha? What's an alpha for you? Oh, uh, when, when you... Uh, asked me to come onto your show and I, I tried to do a little research and I, and I see these incredible people that you've been meeting and again thank you for for the invite it's and uh, it's our honor. and I was trying to to, to relate to, to you know the, the alpha talks and you know the first thing that comes to you about the alpha is this you know question of the the alpha male type of uh, thing and the, the high achievers mm -hmm. you know controlling uh, yeah 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 so uh, I, I guess uh, everything that relates to alpha is this outliers you know people that are mm -hmm. you know uh, outperforming True. the norm and and, and and doing beyond expectations Love and, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it gets to this book uh, of Malcolm Gladwell outliers and, and it talks so much about you know what it is to be that alpha human being and and and, and what is really interesting is what is it that he understood out of the research that he did out of understanding how is it that people become these alpha human beings what are the conditions that make them become so extremely successful True. and uh, be beyond the, the norm and become these outliers, outliers. You know? i loved it yeah we have a section called the aqua quick fires mm -hmm. so i'm gonna ask you a set of quick questions sure with quick answers so are you ready sure i'll try uh. yeah <laughs> so what is a morning routine you must have uh, orange juice in the morning. I can't live without an orange Oof. juice. One word to describe Creative Zone. Uh, we care. Favorite business book. Uh, this one, Outliers. Preferred method of relaxation. Paddle. Top piece of advice for new entrepreneurs. Just do it. If you could go back in time, what advice would you give to your younger self? Uh, whoa, back in time, advice to my younger self. Um, don't worry so much about things. Keep going. Your favorite city you lived in beside Dubai? Lusaka, Zambia. Really? Hmm. I'll ask you off camera. <laughs> How do you stay motivated and inspired during challenging times? Uh, trying to bring some peace into my life and uh, relate to things that I like. And then slowly things, you know, don't have, don't, are not as bad as they appear. What is the best business decision you've ever made? Joining Creative Sound. One thing you can't work without? Uh, my PA. In three words, describe yourself. Um, wanting to help, 
um, motivational, try to support the people around me and um, passionate about everything that I do. What is the future plans, a quick future plans for Creative Zone? Um, we have very ambitious plans of where we want to be, but as part of my natural state of things, we're just immersed in, in, in going out and, and helping out, you know, and opportunities keep on opening up. We, we opened offices in the last two years in Qatar, in Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. Recently, uh, a year and a half ago, we ventured into Saudi. Here, new opportunities keep on coming up. We're partnering with more and more free zones that are asking us to help them with, uh, you know, uh, do more business. Um, one dream of mine would be to try to take this even further out. I think Dubai and us as a company, we sit in a prime opportunity of, of going out to developing countries and not developing countries because Dubai is seen as an example around the world. Yeah, so if true. we show up to places around Africa and other Middle Eastern countries and show them the success of what we've done over here, there's a lot of value that we can create for, for people. So my dream would be to start going out there and knocking on some doors around the world and say, listen, this is what we've done in Dubai. This is what Dubai has been doing to attract investors, to attract entrepreneurs, to entrepreneurship, to attract uh, new startups and try to help them with the same. True. The second nugget question. So for the stamping of time and date of this episode, ask me any question you want. Excellent. Um, what is the best advice that you received out of these interviews that you've been getting and the, the, the thing that you heard that struck you the most? The best advice that I got was, it's something that's always back in your mind, mm -hmm. but I had a guest who put it in front, in conscious, that is success is not only about motivation, it's uh -huh. about design. And it's been said by Daniel Priestley. It's like you don't need to just like hit your head in the wall because you're motivated. Mm. You need to have a design of how things to be successful. It's the mm. ecosystem, the services, and, and, and. Mm. It's a pattern. Like what Tony Robbins says, model people, mm -hmm. model mm -hmm. the mentors who mm -hmm. pass your path. Mm -hmm. Love the question. That's excellent. <laughs> now I have a final question for you. Uh, oh, oh. let's switch chairs. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is the call, the deathbed exercise yeah. when you are in your final moments and you have all the people around you uh, and you're about to go in your final hours yeah. what would you like to hear from people around you tell you about you and what impact you brought to them what something about you would like to hear from them tell you Oof. lovely question we'll miss you mm. life without you will be different mm. because of the impact you left on us mm. And I will look to my super close people and mm. say, like, my mother and my wife, mm. and say, I'm going to miss them. Mm. That's in a nutshell. That's so amazing. I love the question. Need well, to, I'm going to gonna I'm gonna give you mine, but mm. this is going to be off the camera. Ah, okay. You can uh, add it. Yeah, I would love so to. So when I got that. asked this, and uh, no, it was no, part no, of an exercise. Oh, because I, I don't roll. We will tell me after we show. <laughs> okay, done. <laughs> <laughs> so we got here. And, uh, <laughs> give me. <laughs> The last question is, sure. what kind of message do you want to leave the audience with today? Look, I, I love this uh, conversation I had with you. My, my message would be, come and meet safe. <laughs> uh, he's a great guy. Honestly, congratulations on everything that you're doing. I appreciate it. The, I can see the, the hard work, the determination, your book. Thank you very much. You're really doing it the right way. I really and, love the uh, conversation. And uh, it's, this is all what it's all about, real people, man. True, 100%. Real people, making it happen, being here, working hard, trying it. We know it's, it's not easy, but this is what it's all about, mate. So congratulations to Thank you. Thank you, brother. I appreciate yeah. it. We have a last, last section. Sure. It's called the Alpha Talks Memoir, okay. where the Alpha guest have to do a couple of things. Yeah. But after the, uh, the shooting, the first is to write their experience in the show. Yeah. The second is to write a question to the next alpha guest coming, yeah. which means you're going to answer now a question from the previous alpha guest. Oh, wow. You don't know each other, but it's a way of connecting each yeah, other. Yeah, yeah. And the third is to recommend somebody who you think can add value to the show. Absolutely. So I'll go with the questions. Sure. So you're ready? 
who was your last guest? Do you remember? Uh, or, uh, I, I, the I see the name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you truly living your life's purpose? That's the question. Absolutely. I Absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm living it on a daily basis. And uh, uh, as I said, my, my life purpose is to, to get up in the morning and to help out. And, uh, and, and we really see it. And, and, really and, and, and that's that's what we're doing. There's a there's a big story behind it. If if you have three more minutes, ahead, I can of add it. But of course, um, go ahead. You know, when when I started this media work, I was uh, going around Africa and doing all these TV documentaries, and I started seeing a lot of, uh, you know, uh, disparity around the world. And you start seeing all these, you know, kids that are not living in the greatest of conditions, and you start asking yourself a lot of questions. And I I was going through this time in my life where I was asking all these questions to myself and. And I remember one day I woke up in the morning, I was staying in this uh, hotel in Zambia, Lusaka, called the Taj Pamozzi in Lusaka. And I, they used to have a paddle court, a uh, squash court. Mm -hmm. And I went there and I st started playing and this man shows up and he says, can I play with you? And we started playing squash together and we're playing and he says to me, what are you doing? And I tell him I'm making this TV show about Zambia. And I said, what are you doing? He says, I am a priest. I'm like, oh mm -hmm. wow, interesting. So we start talking and I said, no, this is interesting because I happen to be asking myself so many questions about life and everything. So the guy goes, okay, so if you would sum it up, what, what, what is your main question? I said, well, you have to sum it up. I said, my main question is, what is my purpose in life? So the guy goes, okay, uh, give me a second, I'll come back. And we go back to the lobby and he goes up to his room, he comes back and he brings me a book called Your Purpose of Life. Oof. And I'm like, what the wow. heck? Is and he's the author of this book, right? So I, I ha ended up having a chat and I learned a little bit more about what he was doing. So I started reading this book and he got me into reading a lot of other books around this, these topics. But to your question, I ended up discovering what was my purpose in life, which was wow. to help out and to be good and to you know, be of value anywhere around the world that, that you go. And from that day, I started implementing this and some incredible things started happening to me. Now, whether you are religious or you have a God or your God is nature or the sun or whatever that is, if you start doing this, True. someone pays you back 10 times. 100%. So you start going into this vicious circle of things where, you know, you start, you know, helping out and being good to people. And someone sends these people to you and, and the way that you react. And if you do react on it, have no doubt that whether it's one day, seven months, or three years later, someone pays you back uh, 10 times. Lorenzo, you know, you said something very interesting, and I had to extend and ask this question because yeah. I get this question a lot. Mm. A quick advice for people looking to find their purpose. Mm. Mm -hmm. How to read the book, to try things. What? Well, I, I'm going to pitch my little sense in there. So yeah. I wrote a book now that nobody knows of. Mm -hmm. I haven't talked about this anywhere. Exclusive, and guys. Exclusive. This <laughs> is the first first <laughs> out. But just because I'm, I'm trying to be careful. I, yeah. You know, I'm very busy with my own work True. at Creative Zone, and I don't want to be mixing things. But it's something that I'm very passionate about, and um, it's called uh, Thrive. Mm -hmm. And there is three workbooks within the website okay. so there is a website that wow. nobody has seen you'll be the first no one way. <laughs> it's called <laughs> www.youththrive.ae mm -hmm. uh, and in, the, in there you can download the book wow. it's a book called thrive it's 100 principles for living an extraordinary life so there's 100 principles cool. and inside the website there's three books that you can download it's all free of course i'm not charging wow. anything uh, and you can download these workbooks that are one of the workbooks is about this, about the purpose. the purpose of your life. How do you go about setting up goals? How do you go about creating daily habits that are going to help you? Uh, so it's it's taking people I through this that. journey and it's all AI uh, mm. organized. Mm -hmm. So whatever your answers are, it's the cool. system will end up throwing True. you a PDF of six pages that end up ends up describing a little bit who you are uh, you know according to the answers that you gave through the well, questionnaires we'll add it to the description of the Please. episode uh, so it's exclusive the exclusive don't, don't for say alpha talks comes out <laughs> it's only here given for the first time and for the all, all alpha talk uh, uh members and people watching you uh, I appreciate it yeah it's been a pleasure love Absolute the conversation pleasure, and i'm sure we'll do more conversations together absolutely thank you very much thank it's you a pleasure. thank you yeah. thank you buddy that wraps another inspiring episode of today's show 
I hope that this episode has ignited your inner alpha and left you feeling inspired, motivated, and ready to conquer any challenge that comes your way. Remember, alphas aren't born, they're made. It isn't about dominating others. It's about embracing your authenticity, leading with integrity, and making a positive impact on the world. If you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to subscribe to the Alpha Talks on your favorite podcast platform. Leave us a review and share the podcast with your fellow Alphas. Also connect with us on social media at Safer Hakim. Share your thoughts, insight, and stories of personal and business growth with us. Let's create a movement of Alphas supporting one another. The world needs more Alphas like you exactly. Until next time, stay bold, stay driven, and stay Alpha.